Dr. Das, and uh, you can please start with your topic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A very, I think both. A very good afternoon to all of you. First of all, I thank the organizers, Dr. Usharani and her team, to give me this opportunity to stand here to say a few words on this new topic. Respected chairpersons, Dr. Ghosh, Dr. Co-chairperson, my senior colleagues, Dr. P.C. Rai, corporate CMO, senior colleagues and dear friends. Today I stand before you to talk on a topic, selective estrogen receptor modulator. First of all, before going to the topic discussion, I would like to dedicate this presentation to all these women who do not have access to the health facility. To those women who are having unnecessary hysterectomy without a proper trial of medical trial of medical management for a simple heavy menstrual bleeding. Now I talk on selective estrogen receptor modulator. When I start the topic, we all understand that this molecule selectively act and control the bleeding pattern of the lady and let us see how it works. If you look at the literature, you will be surprised to know that in 1990, throughout the India, people were subjecting the women when they visit, she comes with a complaint of heavy menstrual bleeding and that was the only option available to her. And now I can say that there are some villages in Andhra Pradesh, if you screen them, they don't have uterus. If you ask them, people who have uterus stand in a line and people who do not have stand in the other line. And surprisingly, this the other line, you have a very negligible number. That means we have a unnecessary hysterectomy throughout the India because we are scared and for a medical management of heavy menstrual bleeding, we do not have a proper trial. Why you subject a lady for hysterectomy? When you ask a surgeon, you ask a gynecologist, she or he says, because the indication is she has a uterus. How do we call that somebody is having heavy menstrual bleeding? The NICE guideline says, it defines that it is a condition where it interferes with the qualitative life of the woman that interferes with the physical, social, emotional and material quality of life. Why it is important to all of us? Why we discuss on this forum? You will be surprised that when a lady is having a heavy menstrual bleeding, she visits a general practitioner. She goes to any doctor available to near to her and surprisingly out of which only 58% of the ladies, they have proper medical trial. And 50% of the ladies going to general practitioners refer to the gynecologist for surgery. And the gynecologist, she takes the upper hand, take the pride, I know the operation, she does the hysterectomy. And to your surprise, these histopathology biopsy of this 50% surgery, you will be finding that normal uterus. How pathetic is the situation? The NICE guideline says, whenever a lady comes to a general practitioner, to a specialist, she should be given a trial of medical trial. A first drug should be started and if it is not controlled, a second drug to be added. And when she doesn't respond to the second drug, she should be referred to the gynecologist. When she doesn't still respond, some evaluation is needed and we can formulate some kind of treatment for her. We all know that normal menstrual cycle, it is 21 to 36 days and normally we all have read that bleeding pattern is from 2 to 7 days and average bleeding loss is 20 to 80 ml and how do we measure that somebody is bleeding more? There are some conditions like benign conditions, malignant condition, these are the benign conditions in front of you, fibroid, pelvic disease endometriosis, polyp, some malignant conditions and of course systemic diseases like thyroid dysfunction, coagulation disease can manifest in heavy menstrual bleeding. 
though it appears a very simple topic that heavy menstrual bleeding but if you take to your heart how unnecessarily hysterectomy is being practiced throughout the India and specifically we find more in Andhra Pradesh. Of late it is Mr. Higham, he developed a scoring chart you can monitor and tell your patient that how much is his bleeding. This is pictorial bloodless assessment chart. The patient has to maintain this chart, she knows and she compares with the previous cycle. What we talk today on this forum, it is not a new to all of us. It is a pro problem throughout the world. In the reproductive age, we find menorrhagia, which was a term used long back. Well, while going through the literature, even I learned that ki all these years during our MD also, 1935, we all have learned that a term called somebody is bleeding menorrhagia. A bleeding, abnormal bleeding on the perimenopausal age is the dysfunctional uterine bleeding that is obsolete. You need to have a common term which is internationally acceptable that heavy menstrual bleeding and DUB is replaced by abnormal uterine bleeding. The medical options you have when you treat a case of heavy menstrual bleeding, tranexamic acid, NSAIDs, combined pills, oral progesterones, injectables, DMPA, netin, and now I stand with you some that is the selective estrogen receptor modulator and finally if everything fail we can look and evaluate for surgery. The NICE guideline says that the first line of treatment should be your liver or gestural IUCD, a intrauterine system when it is put inside the uterus, it releases 20 microgram of hormone, progesterone that controls and affects the lining of the uterus and so that the bleeding is effectively controlled. The second line of treatment should be your NSAIDs, tranexamic acid and combined oral contraceptive pills which commonly we all practice day to day life. And your third line of treatment is oral progesterone which I think all of us, whether it is a GP or a gynecologist, progesterone in the form of registron, primulutin, we all prescribe from 5th to 25th day, second half of the cycle, short course therapy, double dose therapy or injectables of progesterone in the form of DMPA or netin. The fourth option with you is GNRH agonist. The NICE guideline also says the lady doesn't like to have surgery, she should be having the conservative surgery like TCRE. We all know transcervical resection of the endometrium. You are curating out through hysteroscope the lining mucosa of the endometrium in the uterus or in uterine artery embolization, sometimes balloon tamponade. These are the other options also you can practice. Don't unnecessarily go for hysterectomy. This nice guideline teaches us. When you treat and analyze all these drugs which you have in your hand, look at your uh, LNG IUCD. It is very effective, nice says. But we all don't practice. We don't use LNG IUCD. LNG IUCD we use for maybe 1 or percent, 2 percent, 10,000 rupees LNG IUCD. Now the lower doses with 2,500 is available. But the common side effect is because it is an intrauterine system, it can cause breakthrough bleeding, sometimes vaginitis, sometimes infection. NSAID is a gold standard drug when somebody is having ovulatory menorrhagia. Cycle is regular, dysmenorrhea is there, but they can control. There is a limit that they can control up to 20 to 40 percent of the flow. When you start with tranexamic acid, which we all day to day practice R2 when the lady comes with a heavy menstrual bleeding, antifibinolytic drugs only during the cycle 2 to 5 days, it doesn't have the effect on the pathology, it controls there itself. You talk on OC pills, yes. It will give some added advantage of contraception, it will control. But bloating sensation and many people will not tolerate. Then norethisterone, which is a rampantly prescribed by all gynecologists, all GP, 
but it has got an androgenic side effect. Now I pose three clinical situations, sir, in front of you. Look at this. A 30 years lady come to your OPD, says doctor, I have got one child and I bleed very heavily every cycle. What should I do? I also need contraception. But please don't give me IOCD. I don't want any property. Then second patient comes to you. She is little elder, 35 years. She says, doctor, I have got two children, little grown up and I am sterilized. But I have got premenstrual tension problem. I do not want oral contraceptive pill. Please don't give me for my heavy bleeding. I am already sterilized. Why should I give the, why should I take the oral contraceptive pills? The third patient is little more elderly, 40 years, perimenopausal age. She is having heavy bleeding. She says, doctor, my children are grown up. And I had been to a doctor for scan. The doctor says, my sonologist, I have got adenomyosis changes, plus I have got severe dysmenorrhea because I am 40 years old. What should I do? I am really troubled with my pain and severe bleeding. Now the question I am putting to you, what you choose exactly, what will be the ideal drug for you? Whenever we have heavy menstrual bleeding with a patient, we all neglect the situation. We start discussing with our friend. Many a time we give, take the neighbor's prescription. We curse ourselves. What? Why it has happened to me? Why not to my friend? Why it is so? And we delay till we land in chronic anemia and anemia related complications. Now I talk in front of you a new molecule that is selective estrogen receptor modulator. The drug is ormeloxifen. If you look at the literature of 2013, they say that even ormeloxifen controls better bleeding pattern than your norethisterone. If you look at literature, you also know that ormeloxifen is the drug which belongs to the third generation of the SOMs. Estrogen receptors are alpha receptors, beta receptors. We all know it is in the genital tract, periurethral gland, in the breast, in the brain, in the bones. You will have so many estrogen receptors throughout the body. And this molecule, the beauty of this SOM is that it produces the desirable effect. We need an anti-estrogenic effect. Where? In the uterus, in the breast. So it is the drug, controls the bleeding, anti-estrogenic effect on the uterus and the breast and estrogenic effect on the bone. So perimenopausal age, the lady has come to with a severe bleeding. She has added advantage of this breast and this and your on the bone strengthening. This is a non-hormonal and non-steroidal oral contraceptive pills discovered in India 1990 by Lucknow ICMR research as a research molecule and people call it to be Centron. And in 2009, FDA approved this drug for fibroadenoma of the breast, mastalgia, frost dysfunctional uterine bleeding which now we call to be abnormal uterine bleeding and the peculiarity of this drug is this drug is only licensed in the India. When you do heavy menstrual bleeding workup we need to take the history, examine the lady, subject for the pap smear. The most important thing is subject the lady for the transvaginal sonography to measure the endometrial thickness. We all know that endometrial thickness is indirectly reflects your estrogen backup. So that will guide you. If your endometrial thickness is more, more than 12 millimeter, more than 14 millimeter, your ormeloxifen may not be effective. So you may need a hysteroscopy, two minutes more, hysteroscopy or a, a hysteroscopy guided endometrial biopsy. You need to have a thyroid profile when a subject, when a lady comes to you with a heavy menstrual. This is a study done in our hospital, 46 women enrolled randomly in the OPD selected and they were between 28 years to 45 years. They were subjected for the liver function test and kidney function test. Counsel about the drug, detailed history, examination, transvaginal sonography, pap smear, everything was completed. A PBAC chart patient was given to maintain that monthly evaluation of the patient and note down the side effect. 
these 46 patients had also these problems diabetes hypertension fibroid severe dysmenorrhea mastalgia anemia because of chronic bleeding thick and endometrium in ultrasound more than 6 mm up to 10 mm were included in this study we all know that when it is the anovulatory cycle it has to bleed and endometrium becomes thick the doses of ormeloxifen was used in our study 60 mg twice weekly for 3 months 60 mg weekly for 3 months and total is 24 tablets you will be surprised to know that with the use of 24 tablets your patient says dyspnoeia is 40% reduced 65% reduced clot reduced bleeding pattern reduced patient goes for delayed menses and amenorrhea how beautiful is the drug and unnecessary hysterectomy was avoided while using a drug like ormeloxifen side effects like minor side effects like fatigue nausea vomiting hot flush night sweat mood swing was in very minimal patients and the major side effect like delayed menses and ovarian cyst formation was found in three patient it could be these are the basic pcod patient polycystic ovarian disease patients and they manifested with the cyst these are the patients excluded from the study renal function renal impairment liver function abnormal abnormal cytology very thick endometrium we did not include so to discuss your judicious judgment can save a uterus i appeal for that ormeloxifen is a very effective drug acceptability and compliance is very good very low cost only 24 tablets simple doses scheduled perimenopausal age you are giving a added advantage against the breast and the osteoporosis and finally you are avoiding unnecessary surgical morbidity and mortality thank you all but you are the best just while prescribing to your patient you may be a gp you need not to be a gynecologist you can take into the consideration the is patient says whether she desiring for the fertility or the pregnancy in 3 4 months because it causes little delayed menses soms are there and any associated medical disorder and patient's preference ask her what exactly she wants thank you all thank you sir